Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to be taking a look at the Espresso Bin Ultra. So let's get started. So before I begin, I do want to thank Global Scale Technologies for sending over the Espresso Bin Ultra, as well as the previous version, which is the Espresso Bin, which I reviewed on my channel last year, and I'll leave a link down in the description below. And everything I talk about in this video will be linked down in the description below as well. So to begin, they actually converted the Espresso Bin Ultra more towards a router slash firewall instead of a SBC compared to its predecessor. Now, on the Espresso Bin itself, it actually still had the 40 pin GPIO, so you could actually go in and operate the GPIO. PIO pins and do what you wanted to over the network as well as having like three ports so this was like a firewall slash SBC configuration while the new one just went straight forward and did a firewall router configuration without having any GPIOs. As you can see from the back, it's got five gigabit ports, which one is a WAN port, the other four is LAN. It's got two USB, which is USB 2.0 and 3.0, as well as a barrel jack for a 12 volt input. Now the WAN port also has PoE, so you could actually power it over the ethernet. It's also got a micro USB URT port, so you could actually console in if you needed to, if you didn't have any network access. Also supports dual band Wi-Fi up to AC, so it's got all the letters up to AC. And in the front, you got the power button, which is so important because the previous version didn't have it. And it's got some LEDs to tell you what's going on. And those are controlled via software. So you could actually make them do whatever you want. Taking a look at the inside, you can see that they actually removed the support for SATA like from the previous board, but they actually added M.2 support as well as keeping the mini PCIe for other modems or Bluetooth or another Wi-Fi if you needed to. And everything is housed in this really cool black casing where you could actually mount anywhere you want. It got mounting holes, it could stick it up into a wall. It's also got a SIM card slot so you could use cellular data as a failover in case your main internet goes down. So that's also pretty cool. As far as hardware goes, it's got a Marvell 64-bit 3720 clocked at 1.2 gigahertz. It's the same one as you would get on the version 7 board on the Espresso bin. On this version that I got, it's actually got 1 gig of RAM but you could actually get it up to 2 gigs of RAM and uh, it's got 8 gigabytes of eMMC. The major changes, like I mentioned earlier, is the power over ethernet, as well as the M.2 slot that they actually incorporated into this guy. Now, once you get this brand new, it does come shipped with Ubuntu 18.04.4, and it's pre-configured to a point where you're actually able to plug and play it. The WAN port's already set up, the four LAN port's already set up, the HCP is set up, as well as Wi-Fi is set up. But using a uh, Ubuntu base, if you're not sure on how to go in to configure it, it's a little bit annoying. You don't get a web GUI like DDWRT or OpenRT where you can just, you know, play with some options and it'll change stuff. So if you're not familiar with running a firewall slash router on a Ubuntu based setup, it's a little bit difficult. Anyway, let, let's jump in and see what we got going on. So here we have my desktop and as I was explaining before, this is the Espresso Bin Ultra. And we got the Marvell ARM Armada 3700 or 3720, which is the chip that they got. Uh, it also supports reset buttons, LEDs, nano SIM card, DC jack, 4 gigabit LAN, 1 gigabit WAN with PoE. Basically everything that I was talking to you about earlier. Now, as far as the pricing goes, it is for $159, which is comparable to a lot of high-end routers that you would see. Actually, I've seen high-end routers up to $300, and you can't do as much as this guy can do. But to be honest, I find it reasonable for what you could do with this. So $159 is justified in my point of view, even though it is considered a lot for a router because I could pick up a cheap router for $50. You can't do as much as you can with this guy, especially that you could install a full operating system in this like Ubuntu or Arch Linux or whatnot. Another thing that uh, they have going on is that compared to its predecessors, they will be coming out with different operating systems like OpenWRT, BuildRoot, Yakuto, stuff like that. But it's not available right now. I did speak with them and they are working on getting all the images out. So you could just flash a device and get the operating system that you want. And that's what I'm actually waiting for. I will be doing a second review on it as soon as those operating systems come out because I am interested in using this guy with OpenWRT. Now, popping in, in order to get into it, SSH is open. So you could go into SSH and then whatever the IP address is. So I'm going to go root 192.168.84.1. That's what the default DHCP is what they give me. And the password is admin. So it's root admin. Now that's it. I'm in it and that's all I really need to do. If I go into a 
IP ADDR, you can see all the devices are configured as far as the bridging goes. Uh, WAN, LAN, all the links and everything is up and running. And I did pre-install some applications on here. Um, so if I was to show you the storage, it doesn't make sense because I use 2.5. But when you first get this guy, it's actually at 1.2 gigs used. With that being said, since there was no front end GUI, I decided to install one and I have decided to go with Webmin. Now, Webmin allows me to configure this device at ease if you are planning to stay with Ubuntu, but it's still, you still require a lot of like, you know, attention to modifying configs and stuff like that. So here, if I was to go into say networking and I wanted to set up the firewall, I do have like stuff going in and out right now, uh, like log packets so I could uh, manage logs, but that's about it. If I want to block the external IP from people accessing Webmin, uh, which I should really do, um, I would have to do it through here. And if I go into like bandwidth monitoring, um, since I am logging right now, I could generate a report and it'll kind of give me like what's going on, how much memory I use, et cetera, et cetera. So I downloaded about 600 something megabytes of stuff and compiled some stuff on here just to see what's going on. But yeah, Webmin works. And if you needed to get into these configurations and do what you wanted to do and modify settings, you could do it through Webmin or through console access. Now being at its state right now with Webmin installed and just barely minimal use of internet because this is connected to the actual router right there, um, you could see it's not doing much load, uh, 5%, 18%. And um, if I was to say browse a YouTube video, which causes me to download stuff, uh, let's see, YouTube, Nova Spirit Tech, and let's see, I'll play this one. Just keeping an eye on traffic. And yeah, it's it barely budges. I mean, it does a little bit more, but really barely budges. For a home network setup or a small office, this is actually not too bad. You can see it, it did an initial download of the video and then it just streams the rest and I'll download more once it gets to that point. But yeah, it does pretty good. So as far as the conclusion goes, um, I used this router for the past two weeks for my main couple of computer setup, like my main desktop, this computer over here, and a couple of other things. And I didn't have any sluggishness on traffic. I actually tried to like abuse the traffic and see if I would have any issues. I didn't have any between the couple of computers that I had on there. Uh, I didn't have much configurations going on because it was a stock Ubuntu and I didn't want to alter it too much where I'll actually break my forwarding or stuff before I did this review. So I didn't have much heavy configurations on this guy. I am interested in really doing a full review once OpenWRT image becomes available so I can actually play with this a little bit more because I am way more familiar with OpenWRT than actually running a firewall slash router using Ubuntu. So that will be coming in the future. I really liked their previous board, which is the Espresso bin, because I actually use this as a pocket router myself. What I mean by a pocket router is that I had this guy configured, so if I wanted my internet conditioned, um, I would plug the internet into the WAN port and my computer into a LAN port or connect it through Wi-Fi on this guy, and it'll have all my VPN access and everything. So I, this was like literally my pocket router that I would bring around and it operates through five volt USB. So I actually enjoyed using the Espresso bin before. But now since this is more of a dedicated router setup, I'm gonna need a little bit more time with the newer firmwares and stuff like that before I could give a full complete conclusion with it. But I wouldn't say it's too much, too far from this because it's using the same CPU and I had no issues doing stuff with this. So if you guys have any questions about this, let me know down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing, also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.